This evening we spoke to Amnesty International 2 about this. They say the situation for refugees on Manus Island is cruel, it's inhuman, it's degrading. Its researchers who visited recently described a psychological war unfolding with many men suffering from mental illness. Grant Baldwin is the executive director of Amnesty International New Zealand and I spoke to him a short time ago. I asked him for his thoughts on what both Ian, the security guard we spoke to a few days ago, and John, who we've spoken to tonight, who had worked as security guards on the island. This is how Grant Bailden responded. If New Zealand was taking uh, men from Manus or, or families from Nauru, uh, we'd be relying heavily on screening from the New Zealand government, and they have a very thorough process of vetting people for potential refugee resettlement. But what's really important here is that we remember that uh, even if there are one or two people, as, you, as you'd expect in any large group of people um, who've, who've committed crimes or, or, or done things, um, that doesn't mean that, that everyone is responsible for that at all. And you've, you've got people who are, of course, in extremely difficult circumstances, um, who've fled their homes, been uh, detained indefinitely. So there's, there's um, you know, you'd expect that they'd be under some stress. Yeah, you would. And um, you'd expect bad eggs in any group of people. But what these guards are saying is that it's a lot more substantial than that. How do you assess it? It's very difficult for us to assess this. I mean, these people have worked, and we've checked this out, they've worked in Manus Island. In one case, one of the guards had worked there for 18 months. We've spoken to another guy who's worked there for a number of years. And they are saying that there is a substantial number of people there who have done some pretty bad things, criminal things, and now we're hearing allegations that there have been crimes of a sexual nature, even um, involving children. How do you assess that? Well, like any allegations, you've got to actually dig in and assess them based on how credible they are and what's been alleged. So you mentioned the crimes uh, of a sexual nature. You know, the leaks from the from the Australian government on that, and, and you have to question the timing of that and why that's come out. Uh, but the leaks uh, say themselves that, that those uh, claims were never reported to police, uh, the allegations that lo the local community have made. And, and we, saw the same, we saw the same thing from uh, the Australian government back in April uh, when a group of soldiers uh, attacked the refugee centre, um, injuring people. Uh, we saw the Australian government putting, putting out outrageous claims about some of the things uh, that asylum seekers uh, had done, which turned out to have, to have no basis whatsoever. It turned out that that raid uh, was, was the result of, of a drunken rampage by soldiers after a football game. You know, so, so really you have to, you have to be very uh, dubious of, of claims made against any big group of people and take the time to investigate those properly. So do you think that this is part of a strategic leak for political purposes. Australia is getting upset with New Zealand um, pushing on this issue and is putting out information into the public arena to, to make these people look bad. Is, is that how you see it? Well, we can't say that for sure, but, but the timing certainly looks suspicious for this to come out now and for a similar thing to have happened back in April last time. That's Grant Bailden from Amnesty International. And after six tonight, National's immigration spokesperson Simon Bridges shares his opinion. He tells us Australia will never accept the deal and the refugees will never come.